Welcome to part 19. This will likely be the final part to this Galaxy Defiance component-based tutorial series in Godot 4. In this video, we're going to be adding the saving and loading into our game so that we can remember the high score between different play sessions. Now, saving and loading is pretty, we're gonna, there's, there's so many different ways to handle saving and loading. There's not one way to do it. It's going to depend on the game that you're making. And uh, the Godot documentation actually has a lot of really good information on saving and loading. What we're going to do here is just the very basics with a fi with file system um, using a config file, which is essentially a .ini file where we can uh, store a value to the file system and then easily retrieve that value later, the value in this case being the high score. Now let's close out of our ship enemy. Well, let's see if we right click on world and do close tabs to the right, it will close everything to the right. We can open up our game over screen. Uh, if you remember earlier, we had an issue where the stat, where the high score wouldn't be saved between different scenes. And that was because our, uh, that was because we weren't our, our game stats resource. Um, was no longer in memory and therefore is being freed and then reloaded into memory again and it was losing that information. Now that we're going to add a saving system in, well the solution that we had was to create a singleton that held our game stats in memory all the time and never let it um, be freed from memory. Now uh, we don't need that anymore because we're going to be saving and loading our high score into a file. So even though our game stats will reset, it doesn't matter because we're just going to load the high score in. Okay, so let's see how this works. We should be able to do this. You know, just to be safe, we could leave it in the singleton just to be extra safe. Um, there's, really, there, there's really not any harm in doing that because uh, it's kind of what people expect to happen. They don't expect the resource to be freed. So I might actually just leave it. Um, the, the reason I'm saying this is because technically if we were to have a screen in between our world screen and our game over screen, then we could lose our score. The score value would get reset between those two screens because, the, because um, game stats wouldn't be held in memory between them. Uh, so I'm just going to leave it inside of our... our our singleton here, just to be safe, our resource stash. I think that's going to be better for beginners who might, you know, it, resources are rather complicated. It's a complicated topic. Um, they're really important to understand, but there's a lot of kind of subtlety around them that was, at least for me, was confusing at first. Um, the fact that they're shared. So if you change one, it changes every single one that shares that resource. Um, just kind of how they work is a little tricky sometimes. But what we want to do is we still want to be able to remember our high score between closing the game and reloading it, and currently it doesn't do that. So let's create a new function inside of Game Over called load high score. And we'll create another one called save high score. Well, let's see. They can both return void like this. Okay. And so for loading the high score, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new config file. So var config equals config file dot new. So this right here will create a new config file and store it or an object for managing configuration files and store it inside of this variable. Now we want to check to see if there's an error when we try to load the save path. So let's come up here and set our save path. So we'll make a constant up here, save path, and we'll set it to um, user save.config like this, okay? Um, we could also have a test save path 
we'll set this one equal to res.save.config. So user saves in app data, which is where you want to use, which is where you want to save anything when you're in production, because it should be consistent across most devices. So Android, Windows, Mac, Linux, this right here is going to save it in an appropriate spot where um, it will work across all devices and be hidden from the player. Uh, test save path, this right here, will just save it in our file system right here, which would allow us to open the file and see what it says really easily without having to go look in our file system for this save file, okay? So let's start by saying error equals, well, let's, let's create a variable for our save path up here. So create a new variable called save path, and we'll set it equal to test save path for now. And then down here we'll say error equals config dot load uh, save path that, and then we'll say if error does not equal okay, return. So that just says if we got an error message um, when trying to load this file, uh, then we'll just return out of this function and it won't actually load anything. Then we can say game stats dot high score equals config dot get value. Now config files have a section and then a key. And so, um, and then a value of course, but we're getting the value, we're not setting it. So the section, we'll just call it game and the key, we'll call it high score like that. So this just gets the value of high score if that if it exists. Now you can pass in a default value, um, which would uh, which we don't really need to do. Um, but that would be if it couldn't find that value, then it would return that default value. Okay, and we're just setting the game stats high score. So now we're going to create our load high score var config equals config file dot new var error equals config dot load save path if error does not equal okay return and then we'll say game stats dot whoops what am I doing? I'm re I'm retyping load high score. <laughs> My brain turned off there. Okay, once we load the once we create the config file here, we don't need to load it because we're saving. Oh geez. Config.set value game high score. Now these need to be exactly the same. So we are passing in string values here. That's a bit of a pain. And then we want to set it to game stats dot high score. So in this case, instead of getting a value, we're setting it, but we're setting it to the same place. And um, we're setting it to our current high score, and then we just want to say config dot save and then pass in our save path. And that will save the high score to this path. So now that we've created these functions, let's use them. When we first load the scene, we want to load the high score to make sure we have the correct high score from our save data. Now, yeah, that's right. We want to load the high score. Then after we set the high score and we check our score here. Um, uh, once we check our score against our high score, uh, we want to then save the high score. So we'll just right here, we'll say save high score. We're going to load it first, check the score against it. Um, and then if our, sc if our score is higher than our current high score, then we're going to set a new high score and we want to save that, right? In fact, we could do it inside of this right here. It makes sense to do it right here. We only save the high score if, it's, if, our, if we've changed it, okay? Hmm. Let's test it. Let's run the game. Okay, we're gonna set we're gonna try and set the lowest high score we possibly can, which is a score of five. 
Okay, we got it to 10, actually. So there's our high score, 10, right? Close the game. Now down here, we can see save.config because we're saving to here, right? If we open save.config, we can see section game high score equals 10. It's exactly what we'd expect to see, right? Now if we run the game again and we get a score that's higher than that, Fifteen, and then die. There we go. High scores or scores fifteen. High score is now fifteen, and it's going to tell us that the following files are newer on disk. What actions should be taken? Which just means that this this data here is changed. We're going to reload, and you can see that now it says fifteen, is that save this file was changed. So um, if we run it again, let's try getting a lower score than our high score. Okay. And it should say that our high score is still 15, and it does. It remembers that. So let's change our save path to save path instead of test save path now so that we're using the actual save path because we verified here that it is working correctly in this file. That's useful for debugging to be able to see it. Now we can just delete this save.config file from there. We don't need it anymore. And our game will use save path instead. That's going to be it. That's it for this tutorial series. Um, I have had a lot of fun with this. It seems that you all have enjoyed um, using components in this way. Again, I know there's still some improvement to be made in the way that I set up components. A lot of you have mentioned the input, uh, the move input component as being um, not really the best way to set that up. Let's see where are components here? Yeah, the move input component. And it's because the move input component is manipulating the velocity of well the move in component has ac move input component has access to the move stats and that's not really what it should do there should probably be three we should probably have a move component a move input component and an acceleration component uh yeah move acceleration or just acceleration component so the acceleration component would have access to the stats um the move component would just move, and then the input component would just get the input. The acceleration component would have to have access to the input um, in order to accelerate using it, and then it would also set velocity on. It would kind of be a middle between the two, maybe something like that. Um, I'm going to think about that a little bit more, but that's probably the approach that I would take. But I think this is fine for this series. Uh, still useful the way that I've set it up um, since the move component is completely on its own it can be used by all the enemies by the bullets and everything we can reuse that that logic so you all have seemed to enjoy this and I appreciate all the feedback and suggestions it's been really useful I've learned a lot I hope that you have learned a lot throughout this series and enjoyed it if you found this series helpful to you and you want to learn more check out my Godot courses um, I am planning on doing, because of how well received this series has been, I am currently planning on doing an action RPG course that uses components. So recreating some sort of an action RPG with enemies, you know, a sword attack. Most of you probably know about my action RPG tutorial series that I did if, uh, three or four years ago. Um, man, I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, in Godot 3, so I'd like to do something similar to that, but maybe a little bit goes into more depth than that did, um, has more to it than that one did. That was only the very basics, like goes in more depth and then uses components. So there'll be a link in the description to my course website, and on that website, you can find a way to sign up for emails if you want to be notified when I do end up releasing that action RPG course. Uh, so I appreciate all of your support. I hope you've enjoyed this series. Thank you so much for watching it along the way with me. And I will see you all in the next 
video that's not going to be a tutorial, not going to be part of this series. Mind you, this series is finished, most likely, <laughs> but in the next video that I make. Thanks for the support.